<laughs> Good afternoon. Um, happy Sunday. Welcome to my daily uh, message broadcast. This is episode number 493. And the topic today is the many facets of love. And I'm going to get into that in a second. Before I do that, let me introduce myself and why these talks, why I do these talks and what these talks are about. Something like that. Um, <laughs> my name is Barry Selby. If you haven't figured that out already, I'm a best-selling author, speaker, and relationship attraction expert. I help strong, successful women find and create balance in their love, life, and business. I'm also a passionate champion for the Divine Feminine. And as I was reminded today, I'm also a spiritual love coach. I use the word spiritual because I had a conversation with a friend of mine that reminded me of that this morning. And I'm going to get into that in a moment. So I do these talks every day called Messages from the Masculine to Inspire the Feminine Heart. And it started way back in 2016 originally after the election. So I've been voicing my <laughs> maybe dissent on the current um, administration for a while now, but subtler than, rather than blatant. Anyway, today's topic is the many facets of love. And it's episode number 493, as I mentioned. So seven days till 500. That's quite something. So today's topic um, is really just something that hit me today um, not painfully so but it did wake me up and what I, what I really want to speak to is because <laughs> I was thinking people are going to take this the wrong way and think it's going to be something more about sex it's not, it's about love and I mean this in a certain way is what's been happening and as I've shared over my last few Facebook lives there's a lot of upset going around in the population particularly amongst women and the question that's come up in some some conversations in a certain side of me is how do we stay in loving and handle this discord and so I realize of course there's such a thing as tough love and ways of being uh, I'm going to say this in a way that's nice more love centered in our approach to resolving problems than it could be but what that what that birth for me, what they inspired was to remind myself, and ideally we're reminding you as well, that love comes in many ways and shapes and forms in our ability to connect, communicate, and collaborate. I'm trying to think of three C's, that's why I came up that way. In our relationships, both romantic and social, non-romantic. And one of the things that I realized that I'd forgotten, because a little sidebar, I've got a program that is actually starting up in a couple of weeks now probably two weeks, um, called Love 18, which actually is a group program people are joining in. I'll put the link in after, at the end of the broadcast in the comments. That basically is a group course for, a, I've limited to 30 people, we'll see how many show up the course. There's really 18 different practices and 18 different aspects of love. So of course it's been on my mind, I didn't realize it was so blatantly on my mind, but the thing I realized that I missed, which I need to talk about now, because it is Sunday, and Sunday is a spiritual day usually, at least for me it is, that love is spiritual, or that love can be expressed from a spiritual level, which is going to be one of the 18, unless I make it 19, we'll see. Uh, <laughs> what I want to speak to though, is how we forget about that in our lives we get into a place of reaction or a place of um, judgment and we forget to love. So I want to play with this a little bit and, exp and, and tease it out, so we say, around spiritual love and about love in general because it's something that we could do better with, all of us. There are very few people I, be I believe on the planet that are learning how to express love or can express love in a very fluid, authentic and embracing way so I'm sort of pushing nudging us in that direction should we say including myself so I'm not I'm not there yet by any direction of imagination imagination but speaking of the spiritual place and I was at my um, spiritual the spirit, I was at my spiritual center not my spiritual center but the spiritual center I belong to this morning which I am on pretty much every Sunday um, called Agape International Spiritual, spiritual Agape International Spiritual Center here in Los Angeles and I was, as I was saying, I was talking to a friend this morning, a friend actually I didn't realize we, we hadn't met before, but we just immediately connected because we were both graduates of the same spiritual psychology master's program. I see spirits playing out a lot in this. And so I want to speak to that as, as part of the context because I realized more and more I've been dropping that in my marketing. 
in my messaging, in my coaching, to use spiritual principles that I know so well. And I'm just wondering, why am I not doing that? So I want to unpack this a little bit because I'm realizing that the spiritual part of love has been, perhaps in mo only my experience, maybe not in yours, been sublimated to a degree or been reduced so that we can be more humanistic in our approach. And I'm realizing that may be the error. At least for me, I'm realizing it's more and more it's the error. So bear with me as I unpack this for myself and maybe it will benefit you too. Over the last... Has it been only 10 days? More than that, I think. But over the last period of time, which a lot of people have been sh voicing, sharing over social media, their upsets and concerns and frustrations and all these challenges we've had because of what's been going on with the Supreme Court nomination and the um, unresolved sharing of Dr. Ford's experience, because that hasn't been resolved yet, I found myself being much very caught up in this as well because since, since a lot of my work is around supporting and serving women and holding a space for them to be whole, when I see a woman being, to a degree, crucified and exposed without any real um, resolve, yeah, I feel it. it. It hurts. And I realize that when I do that, I'm forgetting, I'm forgetting my spiritual teachings and forgetting my own understanding of the truth. And I'm not doing it as a bypass. You know, let me be clear about one thing right up front. Something I learned in my, in my master's degree program in spiritual psychology was very clear that when we use spirit as a um, excuse, then it's generally a spiritual bypass. Or as another person I know talks about it, spiritual saran wrap, <laughs> where we basically insulate ourselves from dealing with the issues. And I'm very clear from what I learned from my master's program and from what I've done for the last 30 plus years is that being spiritual does not separate you from the emotional mess or challenges or experiences. It actually is inclusive and it actually is the container for it in the sense that knowing that we're all spiritual beings having human experience, which is the teaching I come from, what it means is that everything that's happening is contained within it. So all of the divisiveness, all of the upsets, all of the rage, all of the lies, all of the frustrations, I'm looking at words to use that I don't get into too much trouble with, about what's been happening recently, are all contained within it. I'm exploring as I'm going, so bear with me for a second. Which, which for me reminds me that all of that is a good piece that all of that is changeable. See, the one constant I'm very aware of in this teaching that I've learned from is the only constant is spirit itself. It's, it's eternal, it's infinite, it is constant in the sense of its beingness. Everything we do in the human form, everything we do inside of this human experience, inside the spiritual beingness, is a malleable and changeable environment. So, those big decisions that happen and we think, oh, that's it, it's over, aren't. They're changeable. This may be giving you some hope, by the way. I'm, even I'm attempting to sort of unpack the spiritual understanding piece. What I'm getting very clearly is a lot of what's been happening is reversible. It's changeable. It's, it's not cast in stone because even stones wear down over time. Now, I'm talking, obviously, in glacial time or in... Um, millennial time not it sorry millennia time not millennial time <laughs> rather than just in minutes but the recognition is that, that some of these things that are happening that we are challenged by are not permanent and don't have to be long term they can be changed everything can be changed i hope that gives you some hope at least for nothing else so getting back on this onto the love piece because that was what i was sticking to but that was a little offshoot i wanted to sit with it for a moment because I realize there's value in that. Another piece of this is that all those flavors of love, all those aspects of love are all again contained in the same container of spirituality. So spiritual love though and, 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 and okay I'm gonna play this one now. Spiritual love is usually um compared with or aligned with unconditional love 
which sounds very idyllic and very paradi 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 paradise-like, something like that. But the truth is that unconditional love is not what we're doing here. I'm sorry to break it to you, but unconditional love is a spiritual experience that happens in a spiritual place. When we're in this human experience, unconditional love is pretty much impossible. Pretty much. Not guaranteed, but pretty much impossible, which means that our journey, our work is how to make loving as sacred as we can, knowing that we can never reach necessarily that level, so that we can love from a place that is whole. For most of us in our journeys, for most of us in our ability to love, we, live, we love through a lattice work, like a grid or a um, filter of our experiences. So unconditional love is usually beyond our reach. But what we can do when we, when we choose to is learn how to love as whole as holy with the w holy as we can and also how we can apply that to ourselves and as i'm explaining my program in pieces right now but that's the way it is and so a lot of work we do or can do or need to do is really get get into that place inside ourselves where we can actually apply that loving that we want to put out in the world to those wounds inside to those hurts inside to those blocks inside the more we can apply the loving to that place inside the more we're able to love others and the more able we are to reduce, remove and unpack the judgments we place against ourselves or other people. Loving is a very powerful healing agent. That was actually one of the things I one of the print one of the quotes and teachings, one of the, the course I studied was loving sorry, excuse me, healing is the application of loving to the parts inside that hurt. Think about that for a second. Healing is the application of loving to the parts inside that hurt. If you were willing, to, if you were actually willing to, if you applied loving to your own wounds inside, your own hurts inside, your own judgments inside, your own guilt inside, resentments, anything you carry around that is negative or hurtful, if you apply loving to that place inside, you may be very surprised how your life will change, because it will. Loving is powerful. Loving is a um, a teaching that teaches itself. If we if we learn to love, we learn from it how to be better better lovers in the world. I don't mean lovers romantically speaking. Hi, Talisa. Um, are you saying love yourself unconditionally? That's the challenge. Hold hold that one second. I think I know the thought, and I think I may have lost it. So I'll stick to this one. Okay, and respond to this one now. It would be wonderful to say love ourselves unconditionally, but it's very, and I believe it's very challenging to do in this human form because we have this thing called an ego. And our ego doesn't have a clue what unconditional means. It, <laughs> our ego is based upon right, wrong, left, right, up, down. It Contrast is how ego really thrives and expresses. So to be an unconditional, which is really like having no um, polarity, disparity, or difference, is very challenging. Now, I've had I've had experiences and glimpses of unconditional love. Let me be clear. So I just want to say it's nothing I think we do easily. I've had spiritual experiences in different trainings, retreats. I haven't done plant medicine, but other things like that, where I've actually experienced unconditional love that blew me wide open. It was a transformation experience, and it didn't last. I don't believe it's possible to function that way. In fact, I've been at trainings where I've seen other people blow so wide open to unconditional loving that they were almost almost functionally dis. They're almost. Um, ineffective functionally for hours but then when they went to bed and woke up in the morning they were back to being themselves to a degree they were expanded because of what happened but they weren't they couldn't stay in their initial place because it was, it was almost impossible to function in that place because when you love yourself unconditionally so if you can love yourself unconditionally then nothing will influence you touch you move you or hurt you uplift you the thing about unconditional loving is it doesn't it doesn't um, it's not movable by your mood and as human beings expressing and being on the planet we I believe this is my belief system of course because it's my video <laughs> that we experience the highs and lows of life because we don't love unconditionally and the thing is if we loved unconditionally there would be no highs and lows which would make life boring now I'm judging this by saying that I understand that but I believe I believe unconditional loving is a is a flat line energetically and I believe that we have so many different flavors, facets of love, as I was talking about. 
because it's what gives us the joy and experience of life. It's the contrast, it's the journey, it's the expression of life, which is why we are here, my belief. So for me personally, maybe not for you, maybe not for any of the rest of the world, but I believe for myself that loving is a smorgasbord of choices. As I mentioned, I have the new course starting in a couple of weeks, which is called Love 18, which is 18 different flavors, facets, choices about love. And some of the things to talk about today are in that program, or in that course, because love isn't just one thing. I talk about in my course, another piece I talk about with love is self-care. There are people out there who think they claim to be the most amazing lovers. If they don't take care of themselves with their diet, with their health, with their grooming, with their bills, with their finances. So self-care is a part of loving that is vital for us to have a healthy lifestyle. Simple as that. I talk about self-support is another one because a lot of times we don't stand up for ourselves and choose our dreams because we don't love that part inside to do that. See, these things I'm talking about are fundamental pieces, but if you put love within each one, each one of them, like you fill up each um, aspect with love, it fuels it and expands it so it can actually help you. Love 18, I'm feeling more and more as I talk about this because I'm still writing the whole thing out. I've got it, I've got it framed. That's why it's not going to be ready for a couple of weeks, but people are signing up now. The power of it is game-changing because when we recognize the power of love in so many different areas of our lives, our lives transform. That's the power of love. Sorry, I just... I just heard Huey Lewis in the news just singing in my head that way, Power of Love. Okay, uh, <laughs> getting back on track, because if there's anything else I want to share about this piece, because the thing for me about love that's so vital, that's so powerful, is that we have this forgetfulness about the power and the range of it. This is the thing. Most of us are trained, educated, defaulting belief that love is something that happens in romantic relationships. That's it. We don't think about love consciously when it comes to, well, for some of us, when it comes to our family, when it comes to our siblings, when it comes to our employees or our bosses at work. This is where love gets interesting, challenging. When we have this um, inability to express love or even know that we can call love in other areas. Because love is not just romantic. Ta-da, hello, let's get clear about that. Yes, yeah, I'm, I'm, glad, I'm glad you agree that self-care is, is love. It is. It's one of the components, and it's one of the courses, one of the parts I'm teaching in the course because it's a piece people forget. And so in some ways, what I'm teaching is so fundamental, it feels like it is, but I'm realizing so many people don't get half of the things I'm talking about. I'm not saying this is my stuff. I'm saying that we, as human beings, forget to take care of ourselves, for example. I know I do. I get something I get running, and I'm so busy working, I forget to sleep properly. So my self-care is off. So I'm, I'm, I'm in the course as well. I mean, I'm teaching it, but also I'm going to be learning from it too to remind myself how to stay in the right place for myself. Because I know that when we do this, we thrive. Because when we do this, we're filled up. We're fueled by our own resources, our own love, which means that we can take on the whole world in a good way. <laughs> so I hope this makes sense. And I hope this is something that will be of, um, of use because if nothing else... Actually, I think this video is going to go onto the, onto the sales page because it lands for me. This speaks to what the topic is about, which is how powerful we are when we love properly, effectively, and authentically. Not unconditionally, but authentically. And so the course, and I'll give you the verbal link now. I'm going to put it in the comments so you can check it out. But it's, it's barryselby.com forward slash love1818. Because it's 18, 18 keys. Principles. Principles? Keys. This, this, this video, I think, is going to be on that page. I feel like it needs to be on that page because this expresses a lot of what that program's about. Um, and if it interests you, sign up. It's starting in a couple of weeks. It's going to be a group program with... Um, a, it'll have a Facebook group, private, face, private secret Facebook group, um, weekly assignments, and group calls every week as well. Actually, video, probably. I think it's video calls. I'm planning as I go. So I appreciate you being with me and listening to this. This is... This is something I'm really sitting with right now, especially after what happened the last couple of weeks. And as I mentioned in the beginning, this is one of the challenges that we're facing is that it's challenging to stay in a loving place with all the stuff that's been happening the last couple of weeks. But I'm suggesting that even though there's a lot of push because of the elections coming up and everything happening with the um, rhetoric that's out there, 
that we can stay true to ourselves and we can still do these actions with love in hand because sometimes it's challenging to get in there and fight and fight and then lose touch with our loving I suggest it's possible to do this fight but from a loving place that is going to be an interesting experience but I feel like it's possible for us to do that because when we start to get driven by fear we, don't, we lose, we're in the same boat as everybody else when we're in a place of love those who live in fear will lose to us not to say we're better than them but love wins over fear every single time I think you get my point so a quick wrap up I appreciate you being with me as I said this is my daily Facebook live um, it goes onto my YouTube channel and the podcast so I'll give the links so you can find those places when I finish doing the Facebook live it goes onto my business page on Facebook amongst other places so if you go to Barry Sober author you'll see my archives of all those on Facebook you can also find my archives on YouTube because I put them on my uh, channel which is Messages from the Masculine actually playlist which is Messages from the Masculine under my channel or my username which is Barry Selby all my social media is the same and my website and then I put them under my podcast slowly but surely which is um, Messages from the Masculine on iTunes and you can subscribe there um, so what do you say there oops so to Lisa what do you say so you truly do believe you can't love anyone until I really love myself however it is hard to do especially when I have been conditioned otherwise I absolutely understand and agree with you, Talisa. I would invite you to check out my program, first of all, because I'll be teaching about that stuff. The thing is, what you're saying is true. Because the, thing, what, the reality is we can only love other people as much as we love ourselves. But we think because the other person loves us, that's loving. It's incomplete. So loving starts inside, yes. Loving from your overflow works in healthy relationships. That's actually a no longer codependent relationship. And when you love from your overflow, then it's easier to love because you're not tied to somebody else's love to feel okay. Again, that's codependence, which is a trap. I talked about that before in other broadcasts, so I won't say it again here. But I appreciate your question. And Talisa, by the way, thanks for in, 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 interacting. I'm glad you got some feedback. Some, sorry, I'm glad you gave feedback and you got some input. Hope it's helped you. Um, so I gave you the links where to find me. Again, barryselby.com forward slash love18 is where you can find my program, my course. And if you're not practicing self-love or you haven't practiced self-love enough, I also recommend that you have my program, excuse me, I have my guided meditation practice, not program, called, uh, which is the self-love, it's the, actually self-love mirror meditation practice, guided self-love mirror meditation practice. If you go to barryselby.com forward slash self-love, I'll put the links in the comments, you can get that there as well. So with that, I appreciate you watching, thanks for being with me, with me as always, I should be back again, well I am back again tomorrow, should be 5pm Pacific time, it's my usual start time. I appreciate you being with me as always. Thank you for being here. And I will uh, see you again tomorrow. So take care of yourself. Bye.